My recovery is beginning to work and it's because I'm staying at home. This is all going to be kind of hard to explain but please bear with me here. I'm not going to explain the science of ME or the mitochondria or the energy cycle right now because it's really complicated and would need its own entire video, um, but you can google it if you're interested. I'll try and leave some links below in case that's something you need. But basically, I've been living in what ME practitioners refer to as a boom and crash cycle. Basically, my body can't produce enough energy, so if I do something small like go into the city centre and Hello, children? So if I do something small, like go into a city, city centre and get a coffee with my friend or even just play the viola in my bedroom, I use up all of my body's energy and I crash for the week because I used up what is called ADP, which your body's not supposed to ever break down and it does and then I'm left with AMP, don't worry about it, science, whatever. Basically, it just means that if I do, if I have a little bit of energy and I use it all up, I'm in bed, unable to speak, unable to move, totally in pain for about a week afterwards, maybe longer. It's pretty grim. Then, after that week or so is up, I get a little bit more energy back and I feel like doing something. I meet a friend or I go for a walk or in the past I would go to school or try to study and then I would crash again. You can see how this cycle perpetuates itself. This means the body never has a chance to build up strength and energy which it needs to heal itself to no longer be chronically ill. In six years, no one tried to explain that to me. I'm not bitter about it. I'm bitter about it. In other words, in order to cure ME, you must never use up all of your energy, even though you have so little to begin with. Because while other healthy people can restore and repair overnight, you can't necessarily do that. It takes longer for you to build up energy and to get the mitochondrial function back working. So you need to build up on energy over time. I'm simplifying it a bit, but that's the gist. This, the practice of staying always comfortably inside your little energy ration, is called pacing. And basically, when you're starting out, the way to pace is to only ever do what you could do on a lowish energy day, no more, no less. Let's say I was in bed six days a week, uh, with maybe one hour sitting up each day. And on the seventh day, I got a little bit of energy from all that rest, so I went out and I got a coffee with a friend. Which sounds like nothing for a healthy person, but for me, it uses up all my energy and I crash and I have to, you know, be in bed again for two weeks. But let's say, after I recover, start to recover from that crash, I, I decide to do what I used to do on the six days, except do it for seven days. So spend seven days in bed a week with one hour sitting up each day. And then by the end of that week, I do have a little bit of energy, something I could maybe use to get a coffee with a friend, but I don't. I stay and I keep doing that routine. And I do it for another seven days and I do it for another. And after a while, I'd stop waking up some days and feel really, really bad and waking up other days and feeling a little bit less bad because I'd be so consistent and using the exact same amount of energy and strength each day. Like my production of energy becomes consistent to match my consistent use of energy, if that makes any sense. What we call the baseline, which is like the amount of energy you can consistently create that would get bigger and bigger very slowly. So maybe five weeks later I'd be able to sit up for two hours every day. The objective is not to have high or low energy days but to gradually build up a sustainable amount of energy over time. Here's the thing, the success of your pacing only has two variables. I mean it will work as long as you sort out these two variables and those are circumstance and mindset. The first part's pretty obvious you might not be able to pace if your circumstances don't allow it. You're probably not housebound if you're working, obviously, so pacing for you, you might be able to start at a much higher baseline. For me, pacing meant I had to take a year off college, but also I was too sick to show up to college because I kept passing out every time I left the house, so that kind of sorted that problem out for me right from the get-go. <laughs> wasn't really much of a choice. I can't really help you. With pacing and this isn't really about you this is about me and i have to start using the new pronoun because it's it i'm not a medical practitioner the second is mindset and i can definitely speak to you about mindset this is so big when it comes to pacing and again there's two parts of it the first thing is i have to get myself out of the mindset that energy is just for doing stuff being productive etc what i'm saying is my health isn't just a tool with which i can do things i used to think that if i had a tiny bit of energy and i used it to do everything i had to do school homework etc and then had to spend the rest of the time completely disabled, completely unable to 
function, you know, really, really, really sick, that was the correct way to spend my energy, which is ridiculous. I know that now, but at the time that's really how I saw the situation. Whereas now I'd much prefer to use my energy to fix and deal with and help things internally rather than externally and to help heal myself. The second part of the mindset issue is to get out of the mindset that recovery benchmarks are based and defined by activity. Because if one thinks that, then they're inevitably going to make bad health decisions down the line. I used to lie around in bed and fantasize about activities and things I could do if I was well. I desperately want to travel. I'm obsessed with traveling and all things travel and culture related, especially languages. But I love everything. I love learning about another cultures cinema and music and philosophy and politics and how it's all reflected in its language and dialect. Like I'm just, I know we all love traveling. I know everyone wants to travel, but I'm a nerd about traveling is what I'm saying. <laughs> and other things too, like I used to fantasize about, you know, going to events in my own city or exploring my own country or just hanging out with friends, you know, going to parties, that kind of stuff. You know, just being out in the world. And I used to fantasize and fixate on these things as benchmarks for recovery, as goals. And of course, I still plan to do these things, but A, they're long-term goals. And B, I don't focus on them. I've realized that to recover and to stay on track, you really need to be physicality and ability and feeling oriented as opposed to sort of activity and productivity orientated. Oriented. How do you speak English? I don't want you to think that I've given up on my dreams or plans, that's not it at all. It's just that I want to be led by my health and recovery and, and let my life follow that timeline instead of having a preconceived idea of what I should be doing and forcing myself to recover in a different way or whatever to fit into that timeline. Basically the practical implications of that shift is that I don't think about what I want to do and I do think about how I want to feel. And this meant that this year when I was lying in bed unable to do anything, instead of fantasizing about the trip I desperately want to take to Turkey whenever my mitochondria are getting their shit together. I focused on how great it would be if instead of having to spend my time at home in bed on my back unable to do anything, I could spend my time resting at home reading or strumming on a guitar or writing or drawing. I focused on the next step of my pacing trajectory. And once I focused on that, it became so much easier. Because if you're always focused on a life of activity, then you will use your energy to get like a little Emmy friendly sized piece of it. But that's not really how it works because then you're putting yourself back into a boom crash cycle. I told myself essentially that I'm going to be in this house, in this neighborhood for months and it's stressful at first, but once you get really comfortable and into that idea and you start fantasizing about the things you could do in this space and your brain makes that shift, then you naturally don't exhaust yourself because when I wake up and I, I, I you know, I get inspired to draw or to write or to read, um, as opposed to getting inspired to do something that would exhaust me. Of course, at first it is a little bit upsetting and a little bit shocking to kind of go, oh my goodness, if in order to get well, I have to basically ground myself. But it's a really, it actually ends up really fine. The fact that I've been reading, like I've read like 12 books in the last two months, I can play guitar, I can cook for myself, I can sit up like all day with my head above my waist. Like these things sound so ordinary to other people, but to me they're just huge wins. And the fact that I can do these things consistently every single day is mind blowing. I feel like something's happening, something very important is happening in my life right now. This could be the beginning of the journey in a very real specific way to me being well and, and because of that it doesn't suddenly feel sad at all it feels really really empowering and really exciting i'm not obviously enjoying the illness part but i'm able to be very present in it and be very interested in it and be very invested in it and not just spend my days like fantasizing about the trip i'm going to take to turkey when i get the mitochondrial function that frankly i deserve but here's why what i just said matters and isn't just a bunch of hippy dippy crap big picture Recovering from ME is sometimes about pulling yourself back, but it's sometimes about pushing yourself gently. There will come a time when I have built up a bit of energy, when I have bit, built up a bit of strength, when I have sorted out some autonomic nervous system and immune system things, when the next step in building up my recovery will be to build up fitness. So while right now exercise is the worst thing for me, like literally worse than gluten, it's that bad, there will come a time when exercise and activity will be the only way to get to the next step. So if I over exercise, if I rejoin life too quickly, 
I'll really set back my recovery. If I am too cautious and don't do these in a timely manner, it'll really hold back my recovery also. And nobody can make this decision but me because I'm the only person who can feel what my body's capable of. It's a really tough, highly pressured judgment call and that's one of the reasons why recovering from ME is so hard. I will be listening to my body and to my intuition and to my sense of ability and I need above anything else to entirely trust these senses and to entirely trust my own judgment. And I can't do any of that if my decision is being influenced by a desire to do something. Essentially, I have to be grounded and happy and comfortable and patient here in this house so that when I get the sense that I need to be leaving it, that I need to be moving on to the next stage of my recovery, I will know that it's based on my body telling me something and not based on cabin fever or impatience. So I'm relaxed, I'm resting, I'm creating a life for myself that doesn't leave this neighborhood. I'm focusing on now. What would make this life better? If I could stand, if I could tidy my room, if I could have friends over more often, if I could do all of the above in the same day. I'd love to be able to play the viola more. I'd love to be able to film and edit a whole video and sit in one day instead of having to do each bit of it bit by bit over a long period of time because it just takes more time than it really needs to. I'd love to be able to sing to myself while I cook without getting out of breath. I'd love to sit up straight for hours and not get dizzy. I'd love to wake up feeling refreshed and never feel nauseous and never have to worry about getting up and down the stairs. I have so many dreams and so many plans, enough to fill up a whole house. And so I will stay here until I have finished and accomplished every last one, until there are no more dreams or plans left in this house. And then, and only then, will I look for more outside.